Hey guys, welcome to the RV workshop internal. And I want to talk to you about what I've been working for the last year. It's just gonna be a random stuff because I've been jumping from project to project, trying to help wherever I can. And I named my presentation the state of K, but it's not really K. K is kind of somewhere in the back, but I'm trying to improve how people interact with uh, with K by creating uh, front end products on usability, trying to imp uh, increase the usability and user retention. And I divided my presentation in a few parts. The KIDE, I presented this last time I been here in February. And I want to say how it evolved and where it is right now. The ERCX project, I've been working a bit on the same thing, trying to create a ID extension for VS Code, and I, that's still in development. There are a few things I would like to ask you how to create it and how to improve it. And another spin off from the KID I've been working on is something that Raul picked up, and that's the symbolic debugger. It's trying to navigate through Solidity. Uh, in a much nicer way, trying to connect with the prover and visualizing graphs and a lot of work is in there. And I think there's three people working run, right now on that. And I want to talk about control, but I'm going to leave Andre because his presentation is more about that. Uh, why I started? Because it's hard to develop with uh, command line tools. It's hard to pick them up. It's always custom, it's different. But uh, an IDE has already an interface which is familiar to a lot of people. They know where to press buttons. They know what to expect. They know they already have a workflow in mind. So if it's possible, we want to connect to that. Uh, that we want to share that experience with them and just connect ourselves with the buttons. That's how I like to call them. The ID also offers a, a nice thing like highlighting, which is very important for visualizing code, understanding the structure under the code, error reporting in line. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's not parsing, it's actually regular expressions. It's not exact, but it's. Uh, it's actually don't want to rely on parsing because parsing can fail if you have an error, but you still want to have partial syntax highlighting. For example, if you start syntax, but uh, haven't finished all of that, then you still want to have colors and everything else. So it's a fault tolerant uh, syntax highlighting. It's not perfect, but it's fine enough. You're concentrating exactly on what you're writing right now anyway. And uh, it's actually very fast. It happens instant, instantly as you type because it's implemented this way. Uh, we also have uh, certain error messages related to parsing. We can highlight them in, uh, in code. So just get the feedback immediately. And I don't know if I implemented that last time, but uh, I managed to introduce uh, go to definition and find occurrences based on parsing. So it, you're getting exactly what you're pressing on. So you're getting exactly all the usages of certain syntax and uh, go to definition exactly what you're parsed. So there's no ambiguity, no confusion there. And for the last eight months, we had 445 downloads. I counted last time. And we kind of have downloads pretty much every day, one, two, or three. I don't know who. I don't have that kind of information. But uh, it's nice because some of us, yes. And I know, no. This is, so I have a page where I can look at the statistics and look something like this. and. Uh, it's been steady. I don't know. Your students from uh, Urbana. Hmm? I've seen them in Discord asking for this. I've seen them on Discord asking for this. So just, I think yesterday somebody asked, hey, how can I use this? 
and people in our company, but probably people outside the company which are trying to uh, work with K. Look at there. People find it, and since uh, the Visual Studio Code suggested, hey, you have a .k extension. These are some of extensions that uh, handle this kind of files. Um, this is from my old slides. The plan I had then, just have for the first phase, I wanted to have uh, just the language server protocol uh, implement the development experience. The second phase was a debugger for K. This is a, something that didn't concretize. But the phase three, the prover, uh, this is spinning off into what Raul is working on. Uh, the first phase, I think, is kind of complete. We have pretty much what, what we wanted to implement. And uh, it's working. People are using it. 400 downloads in eight months without promoting it. That I think that's good for us. And the prover, this is what Raul is working on right, right there. But since then, there's been a lot of evolution. And I have a slide at the end, which is I want to talk about, about how everything should uh, fit together. Uh, yeah, this is other ideas I've been working on to have the language specific IDE and uh, for Solidity. We're concentrating a lot of effort into Solidity right now because it's the most popular and there's a lot of other things connecting to it. We have uh, tests we can run, we have tests we can generate with TRCX. I want to share a few slides later. <laughs> um, yes. But yeah, we're trying to learn how to do things specific for languages. We're not trying to generate them. We're trying to write it down as we'll do for the first time, just to learn what are the steps, what we need to do. I remember Spoofak, yes. Yes. I think Elias has a question. Well, it's not it's not really a question thank you Troy. it's just a request can you please repeat the questions because we don't hear from the audience oh yeah sorry we have an extra microphone so maybe i can give oh i was asking about um can you hear me Elias? yeah perfectly thank you Gregor. okay so i was asking about the um, the language specific component of this id Right, so there are other uh, frameworks like Spoofax where you define a syntax of your programming language and then uh, your IDE somehow processes that syntax and now it becomes specialized to your language, right? So um, you can, for example, have language specific coloring, uh, highlighting, you can click on a particular, um, uh, because it does parsing of concrete syntax, right? It shows you the AST immediately so you can highlight i remember you can mark a certain sub string or a certain yeah. string in the ide and it will parse it it will show you the ast according to the actual grammar of your programming language and you can click then on the nodes and then it will take you to the syntax definition of that particular or the yeah. production right of that particular ast node and so on and so forth so that's why i was wondering how far are we from that or do we want to do it um I, I think it's possible. We can do it. With K right now, we have some performance issues. And for the ID, feedback, instant feedback is very important. So maybe we can have something like this if there's a demand. It's a nice idea. But right now, I think we're trying to, at least from, from my point of view, I'm trying to make a product to see how it should look like, what the user needs. And then maybe you can fill up and say we can generate this. But how uh, are you are you evaluating the idea on users, other users internally? Mm -hmm. So for the KIDE, yes, I I've, I've been receiving feedback. I think for now we have some functionalities which are enough, syntax highlighting and code navigation. Uh, other stuff. 
Well, Daniel complained a bit about not giving proper error messages or enough information for parsing errors. So we've been working on that, but it's not necessarily related to the IDE, just uh, better explanations why the AST couldn't be created because I'm missing, I don't know, a regular expression is not correctly formatted or something like this. Uh, but there are some very specific uh, language uh, features. For example, for the EVM, you want to have bytecode decomp decompilation and uh, you want to debug either at the code level or at the bytecode level. And Raul made this very flawless, seamless. It, you can just click on that and just continue uh, executing on the bytecode or go back to the source code. And I don't know how we could do that from K because it's kind of environment specific. But the result is still good. It's a product that we can offer eventually. Um, the other thing I've been working on is the RCX extension. And Elias is in the call, so he can probably correct me if I say something wrong. ERCX is developed right now mainly for the audit uh, for the investor persona most of the efforts have been in the investor persona on the website and we present a very nice report about how this token is uh, behaving regarding to our test suit and uh, i've been trying to fill in the gaps for the developer persona with the id extension and I created a workflow on, uh, ERC, on the VS Code extension where you can click on, uh, come on, loop. You can click on uh, the code and then you're gonna generate right there. You're gonna generate a list of tests. You can ask for the API to execute everything remotely because we wanna keep the closed sourced. And then you're gonna get feedback inside your code. Hey, this is, your function is wrong here because you're not, uh, you're not uh, matching some of our results. And it's okay right now. There are some issues, for example, if the test pass, we're not giving feedback saying, this is okay, but I don't really have the interface how to say that uh, this is okay because of this. Um, I have similar statistic for this extension. We published it a month ago and have 64 downloads. I think half of them are internal testings, but people started picking up on uh, on, on on their own. And uh, so question, <clears throat> so how do people find out that this exists? So if you go Search. to the RCX webpage, do you find right. a link to yes. the VS Code module somewhere? Y yes, we're working on that. I think we're gonna have to publish it So. Okay, so it's not advertised at all. Correct. Um, I think we tweeted once, mm -hmm. something like once or twice, I don't know. And uh, we advertised it in Paris. Elias had a slide in the presentation, hey, this extension is coming. And um, I think VS Code, the marketplace, when you're searching for something, they give you hints. Hey, you might be interested in this and get the list of things and hey, you wanna install this. And we're just trying to improve that. Uh, searchability, for example, I need to change the name. From right now, it's ERCX testing, but Elias had a very nice suggestion about renaming ERCX Solidity testing. People search for Solidity and maybe they find more information about this. And uh, we have a problem right now, at least in my view, because what I was saying that we don't really present uh, to the users uh, actual feedback. The report, it's still like a report. We don't give them something, for the developers, I mean. We don't give them something which they can sh uh, store, they can save for later. And my suggestion was to generate concrete tests. Uh, these are the actual tests which are generated internally on this slide. And they look something like this. It generates a foundry test, which uh, contains the code, which 
uh, creates the report. It has in the beginning a very nice explanation about what the test is supposed to do and how uh, it's supposed to fail or how to pass. And this is very nice because it's executable locally, but uh, we don't really want to share the entire source code. We want to share only the internal, only the stuff which is not private. Uh, oh yeah, so this is how a report looks like in uh, the IDE. But what I want to do is something like this. I want to click on a uh, test on ERCX. We generate it, uh, and that should be a single click. And uh, then I want to connect it with what Raul is doing. And that's going to be another, for example, right click debug symbolically. And you go to the next interface, and then you start uh, debugging your Solidity code line by line, either symbolic or concretely. And Raul is working on uh, on this with uh, uh, Alison, and I think Anton has started working on uh, on a graph representation of the KCFG, and they want to implement all of those. So the workflow for the Solidity debugger some, should be something like this. You get your source code, you click on a button, and we generate all the compliance tests. Just a second. So yeah. I saw so Raul made some presentation. Yes. This, we recorded it. And yes. he also had some uh, interface. Yes. Right? Was he using this? Or uh, is he using a different interface and we want to migrate to, to VS Code? or No, it's VS in code VS Code. It's in VS Code. Uh -huh. It's a separate code right now. It's a yes. separate code repository, but we can merge them very easily. Ah, okay. So there's right plan. now they're separate because it's faster development like this. Mm -hmm. But how I would do it is just me right now, and I want to present it to all of you so I can get some traction on this idea if it's worth it. To connect ERCX, uh, just click a button on my Solidity code, get all the tests in a way in a way which is fair for users and for us, meaning that we don't really share the entire source code. We give them something concretely, which can then execute. And if something goes wrong, you can go into the debugger and understand better, hey, this is why it's wrong. And you can get a much deeper experience on uh, how you're using the uh, our tools. And right now, this is not necessarily using uh, K, but we can do that with control, meaning that uh, well, Andre is going to tell us more about this immediately after me. Uh, all of this, the symbolic, the KCFG is generated using K. It's not, uh, until now, it's not, uh, we haven't been really using K. What do you mean you haven't been using K? Well, ERCX what? doesn't use K right now. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. So I thought that you were talking about this uh, symbolic no, this, debugger. No, symbolic debugger, yes. It uses K underneath. Okay. The EVM semantics generates mm -hmm. KCFG, and we're trying to create the visualization tools to navigate through the KCFG, which is kind of a pain. But I, a think, lot of I think what you really need here is to start having users outside of RV. Right? So we need to advertise this. We need to start having users and get feedback from them, be driven by feedback from actual users. Because right now, you only do what you think is important and interesting or what others in RV tell you that they would like to have. But we are not the usual users of these tools. That's the plan, yes. But there are some steps. First of all, make sure that everything works and Raul is working. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Just make sure that everything works. That's a wrong approach. Right, you right. don't start like that. There should be the last thing. You know, uh, actually, you start tonight, having users have a minimal thing to give yeah. users so that you can start having users. Yeah, that minimal thing needs to work because I should, I tried once to install it on my local machine but didn't manage to work. Because what doesn't work? The I haven't managed to configure the extension correctly. K, okay. uh, something in my machine was off, mm -hmm. and 
some connection to the language server or the debug adapter protocol didn't work on my So machine. who's the manager, the project manager of this project? Uh, Raul is the main guy. He's a and technical one. Yes. But who's the administrative uh, manager? In what sense? I mean, somebody should make sure that there is a roadmap and oh, there are milestones on the right road, and, roadmap yeah. and that those are met. If they are not met, we need to know why they are not met. Yes. And somebody should be, you know, um, I think Bogdan is working with Bogdan. Raul intensely right now. He okay. made it create this roadmap. Hey, this is important to have. And I think he created it last week. All right. Okay. I guess we need to push a bit on that side, right? It should yeah, be he is. driven by the customers and, um, you know, by metrics yes. that fulfill the customer's, you know, needs for the product. Actually, tonight at, for us in Romania, Raul is having a presentation at the seminar. We should probably view it because it's going to be very interesting. When is it? Uh, at 6 p.m. Okay. 6 p.m. or 7. I think it's 6. 7 was the all hands. Yeah. So tonight at 6, Raul is having a presentation. He has a very nice idea about, oh, the thing about this idea, uh, the Visual Studio Code, is that you can use it in a browser. You go to GitHub, you have a repository with your code, Solidity code, you just press one button and you go right, you press dot, and you go right immediately into VS Code interface, which you can run the ERC extension. Like you, you can go to your browser, click on dot, install the X, uh, ERCX extension, and you can view all the information on your code in the browser. You don't have to install anything because we're connecting to our API and everything executes on our servers. And Raul is working on something similar for the uh, debugger. You press comma this time. And GitHub gives you this code spaces environment where you have everything installed about K. And we probably can provide our own servers eventually. It's still in development. And you can use K without having anything installed in your machine. Everything is remote and you can start debugging your code and having this nice interface without going through the pain of installing because it is a pain right now to install K. It takes a long time. Sometimes you have missing dependencies, mismatches. We've been having this locks engagement, which is not, they can't reproduce the, um, all behavior because some sort of mismatch between dependencies. And we can control all this environment, we can control all the experience by having this, everything executes remotely. And Raul is trying to do that and probably we're gonna see tonight at the workshop. And that's kind of it. So thank you, if you have any more questions. <laughs> So, thank you guys.